Here are five things that I wish I knew before I started driving for Uber. Starting with number one is I wish I would have known that I didn't have to accept every trip. Now, did you know that, Brandon? You didn't have to accept every trip? Uh, I did know that, actually. It's pretty surprising that you didn't know that as a uh, rookie driver, to be honest. I mean, I, I think I adopted Uber driving way early, like two and a half years ago before it was sort of common knowledge that, hey, you can make extra money driving Uber. And I thought that you had to accept every trip. I thought acceptance rate mattered. So I would be picking up the worst trips ever instead of like denying them. So that's that's my top reason what I thought. Yeah, that's like a, that's a, I mean, because you, yeah, you don't have to accept every trip. You're not going to get, you're not going to get like uh, banned or deactivated for not accepting every trip, which is kind of a myth. Yeah. Um, amongst drivers sometimes. So like debunk that you don't have to get, take every trip. Right. And it's like, <laughs> I thought big bad Uber was going to deactivate my account. Well, the converse thing, right. the one that's important is you can't just keep canceling trips once you accept them. When you accept right. a trip that matters if you cancel, they actually care about that because it's, right. I mean, it makes sense if you think about it, it's ruining the user experience. Anyways, if you're wondering who I am, I am Jay and this is my colleague, Brandon. What's up? And we are part of the marketing team, video marketing team here at Gridwise. So if you like our content, make sure you give us that thumbs up and please consider subscribing to our YouTube channel. And also give Gridwise a app store search and look up who we are. I won't, I don't have to talk more about it. Just uh, Google us, Google us. Which brings us to the second thing we wish we knew before we started driving Uber. And what's that, Brandon? I think the second thing that I wish I would have known is just, well, it's more of kind of a, what I wish I would have done. It's just like kind of had the right mindset. Uh, because with Uber, you know, it's not like, you know, an office job or something like that where you like, you know, you're pretty steady when you, with how much you make every single, um, every single day. It fluctuates and it, fluctu it can fluctuate pretty heavily, right? Um, so it's about like having kind of like a, a resilience of, just like how you think about your earnings. It's like some days you're gonna have amazing days, um, but some days you're not gonna do great. And you know, you're gonna have off days and you're gonna have days where you don't, you just don't make that much money. And a lot of times you'll figure out, well, that's just because Tuesday afternoons in, you know, the suburbs aren't great. Um, but sometimes that's just, you know, sometimes it's just kind of like you gotta chalk it up to the game. So, you know, I wish I had a better mindset. Um, to uh you know be a little bit more resilient when during those times where you know, i wasn't um making as much that was just variance but and then also you know kind of being able to reassure, reassure myself that hey uh you know there are like different strategies and things like that that i can try kind of took me a while to realize um some of that stuff so true like you have to cut through all the noise on youtube i noticed that a lot of youtubers i don't want to i don't want to name names but very clickbaity. I made $1,200 in my first week driving Uber. Like you have to cut through that right. noise because those are, they might've done that. I'm not saying they didn't do it, but they're YouTubers. They're trying to go for views and you know, not just right. YouTube, but any other influencers that you see touting, like how much you can make with Uber. Like at the end of the day, like those are probably their unicorn trips and they don't consistently yeah. make that over the long run. So a lot of that is cutting through that noise and setting like real expectations and not every market's That's the same. True. I know like if you live in, we actually, let's, let's get some earnings data here. Um, back in the day when we crunched some numbers uh, through our, our, our data here that not every market earns the same, right? Like markets like New York city consistently earn more than markets, uh, smaller yeah. markets. And what's crazy is in our small market at Pittsburgh, we actually beat out a ton of other similar size cities. Yeah, definitely. I mean, if you're in a, if you're in a New York, if you're in, in in any of the California markets, if you're in any of these Seattle markets, you're just naturally going to make more. I mean, your your cost of living is also higher, but you're you're gonna you're gonna make more if you are in a uh, a smaller or just like a less expensive market, a Minneapolis, a a Cleveland, a um, even a, a um a Atlanta actually. Um, your your earnings are going to be less because well that's just like how that market is right um, and which does certainly tie to to cost of living so you shouldn't necessarily compare yourself to 
um, you know, a driver, a driver making, you know, $1,000 in Atlanta is a lot different than a driver making $1,000 in New York. Which we should definitely post a link to that earnings video somewhere in this video description, or you can click the interactive I button located in the top right corner of this video. Right. And then one of us, either Brandon or me, will will make a video about earnings and the more specifics. I think that'll be a really cool video for you guys. So again, make sure you subscribe and bell for that video. You don't want to miss out on our earnings insights. Which brings me to the third thing that I wish I knew before I started driving Uber, and that's to have a earnings strategy earlier. I was driving aimlessly for the longest time, just accepting every trip because I was scared of getting deactivated and didn't really have a driving plan. So I was at the mercy of the dispatch algorithm. Like I was literally the best driver that Uber wanted. Someone who just didn't think for himself and just did what they were told. And that's how that's how they make the most money. They make the most money off of off of drivers who just follow what they order. And that's the whole point of this whole mysterious computer that manages drivers in the background of Uber. It's called the Uber Dispatch System, and they they pay they pay engineers and data scientists and all sorts of smart people with multiple college degrees and some even with masters or PhDs to come up with like rules of and come up with software that manages us drivers. And let's face it, they're not trying to make you the most money; they're trying to make themselves the most money. And if it costs you your profit then so be it because that's what a for-profit business is for. They're not a charity and you are working, you are working as part of the system. So that's the one thing is I wish I would have came up with an earning strategy early, earlier than I did because it would have saved me thousands of dollars. So uh, you might be wondering, well, Jay, you talk about this earning strategy. Well, what is your earning strategy? My earning strategy was to target those long airport rides, those juicy rides that were long distance and to the airport because I knew if I would head out to the airport, I can wait in the lot when I get up there and get a ride back. Because sometimes if you take just any old long ride outside of the city, you might be stuck in the middle of nowhere. And how are you going to get a ride back? You're not. You're just going to have to eat those miles, dead mile on the way back, which costs you money. In fact, if you think about it, that basically cuts your profit in half. You drive out there and you come back without a passenger, you're wasting the same amount of time driving back, the gas, the vehicle depreciation, all of that without a fare. So my earning strategy isn't really applicable to the COVID situation right now, but that's because I'm not driving there in the COVID situation. If I were to be driving in the COVID situation, you know, let's make another video on that. What would our earning strategy be in, in post-coronavirus. Link it in the description below for that too. You know what my earning strategy would be is probably to do Uber Eats and, and DoorDash. That <laughs> oh, that's my, a good one. Right here, driving strategy. But I mean, you make, I mean, you bring up like a, like, like great points about, okay, early on, establish your earning strategy. And I think it's about, like, no, again, like another kind of like mindset thing where it's like, you're obviously not going to jump off the bat, have any sort of strategy, but off the bat, you should start to think about what is your strategy um, for you, it was airports for drivers. Now it, you know, it could be something different. I'm sure there's, I know there's a lot of drivers that are starting right now. It could be, okay, I'm going to look at airports or, or not airports, but I, I could, I'm going to look at suburbs. Okay. I'm going to kind of, a lot of drivers are doing kind of like the early morning blue collar worker, um, kind of more of suburban slash residential areas and cities, um, things like that, you know, whatever that is. You don't need to have it early, but you need to start thinking about how do I develop it early. With that, really, a way to start thinking about your driving strategy and developing that, it kind of brings us to the next thing, again, that I wish I would have known, is uh, track your earnings as granularly as possible. So uh, you can start by, okay, you're going to start, I'm, an, I'm working for Uber well, make sure I, I know my, my earning stats. Make sure I know how much I'm making per hour. Make sure I know how much I'm making per trip each and every day because each and every day, I'm probably gonna be trying a little bit of a different strategy. So how do I know what, what works? Is by simply mapping that day to that earning strategy, right? So if I know on Wednesday I was doing airports, great, how much did I make that day? How much did I make per hour? How much did I make per mile? If I know on Thursdays, hey, I'm trying the early morning suburban, um, you know, drives. Great. How much did I make per hour? How much did I make per day? How much did I make uh, per mile? Um, and the, the only way to do that is again, like, just like track your earnings, know how much you're, know your stats there. 
Um, and then as you expand, as you, as you should, start to drive for Lyft, start to drive for DoorDash, Instacart, et cetera, well then again, track your miles across all, or your, your earnings across all of those platforms and, and be very smart about, hey, how do you figure out like how much you're actually making? Which brings me to the fifth thing, and that's anything can happen. Like you're always, you're picking up random people, sort of pseudo randomly, and people are people, anything can happen. You could pick up, you know, the best passengers, sometimes the worst passengers. And I'm not going to sugarcoat it. I've done over 2000 trips on the Uber platform platform myself. 99% of the people are amazing, as, which kind of makes sense. Like you walk outside, what you should and be doing and everything you're doing you're wrong. Exactly. You, you meet a few assholes here and there, but the majority of regular people are pretty nice. I would say, you know, which is, which is not a rosy view. I'm not trying to be rosy, but yeah, majority of Americans are normal Americans and we respect one another and we're friendly, but doesn't mean there's no assholes out there. I picked up quite a few like people that eat in my car. That's a big unexpected one. Like, how do you handle that situation? And one of the things I wish I would have learned better also is the customer service side of things, how to handle unruly passengers. They can be cranky. They don't want to talk and they might not feel friendly enough or know you well enough to let you know to shut up, right? Like sometimes you just have to take those nonverbal cues. Um, they have their headphones in. They give you short answers like, yep, uh-huh, no. But you keep asking them. They're too nice to tell you like, hey, dude, I've just had a long day. I'm just trying to go for an Uber ride in peace and quiet. I don't really want to talk to you. Like <laughs> those are the little things that, that I have. Also backseat drivers. Did you, Brandon, like what do you think about backseat drivers, Brandon? Backseat drivers. Uh, I mean, who doesn't love a great backseat driver kind of telling you exactly, you know, exactly what you should be doing and everything that you're doing wrong. Uh, the worst offenders wrong, are the party crowd. Like I've, I, I know that when I pick up a bunch of people late at night for a bar outing, they're going to be the worst offenders usually for actually a lot of things. And backseat driving is like the least worrisome. The most worrisome is just like telling you to like, oh, we can get out here and it's a busy intersection and you're in the middle of the intersection. You're like, wait, I can't do that. And you, before you can even have the entertain that thought, they're already all four of them out the door and you almost got your door taken off. And at the yeah. worst comes the worst trying. Oh, this one ticks me off a lot. Yeah, Calling an Uber bad. for your drunk friend. And like, oh, just wait a minute. We're, we, we got my friend here and they're carrying that friend out and he's just, he's not even, he passed out. I've had two of those and I'm just like, mm, nope, cancel, 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 cancel. I ain't going to be responsible to babysit some drunkard who's not even like the real passenger. Cause it's, it's obviously a, a dude and it's called for like Ashley. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. You know, I've been on the other side of that a couple of times. So yeah, you know, I, I would, I'd appreciate you, uh, you know, taking care of me actually, Jay. Uh, no, but those are, that's uh those are good points. Yeah. Like the, I mean, there's so many problems like late night. Well, I don't know how it is in COVID, but late night generally has always been kind of the, it's been like, all right, this is a gold mine. You're going to get a lot of surges. You're going to get a lot of people. You're, you're, you're never going to not be on a trip, but you're going to deal with some shit. <laughs> so that's always been like, do you want to put up with that or not? Yeah. At the end of the day, like you're, you have people in your car, you're going to have to deal with them. Which, you know, during coronavirus, some may not even wear masks Yeah, like they're required to. No one's policing that but you. Think about that. You're the one that's policing that. Do you want to deal with an unruly passenger who doesn't want to wear a mask for whatever reason? Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you like this content. Like it and uh, let us know in the comments what things you wish you would have known before you started driving. Let us know. Let us know. Once again, uh, this, is, this is Jay and Brandon. Thanks very much and have a good day. See you in the next one.